use Velasov's Bootstrap. Let's try and figure out how we actually install it. So I'll go to the Get Started Guide right here on the page, and I'll just scroll down. There's something about installation instructions down here, and here it says I need to run this command right here. That's method run. I need to run this command, and then in my case, I'm going to use the newest Bootstrap version, which is 4. So I need to add this to my index file. So this is one choice. Let's just keep scrolling. There's also another method right here that I can run this command, and then I can start adding specific components later on. Uh, so that I think that's what we are going to try and use later. This time, let's just do installation method one. I think that's, that's the most important one to learn. So I'll run this command right here in my code. Let's jump to the code and just run the command. Now, as you already know now, this is just going to add a new uh, package to my system, a third part package, which is the bootstrap package. And it's also going to, in the JSON file, add a small piece of information that I'm going to start using that package right now, which is currently at version 3.1.1. Sweet. What else do we need? We need to add, if we're using Bootstrap 3, we need to add this, but we are using Bootstrap 4, so we're going to add this into our index.html file. Again, very simple. Let's jump into the index.html file. If I can find it, hmm, there it is, index.html. I just already added this link. Well, let's just do it again. Let's just add that link right here in the head of our index file, just to explain that we're going to need that Bootstrap file. Sweet. Anything else? If I keep scrolling, Method one is already done, so I don't have to do anything else. But there is something about if I want to start theming my bootstrap, you need to add that as well. So if you want to do theming of your application, maybe having a color theme or something like that, you have to go back to this later on. I'm not going to do that yet. I want to keep moving forward and maybe just add my first button just to see there's actually it's actually running, right? Sweet. So how do we actually do this? Well, it seems that I can run this command right here to kind of add buttons to my system. Let's just, before we run that command, I'm just going to try just to add the buttons module inside my system and see if that's actually enough. So let's try and see if we can add the button module right here. It seems that we're going to need to go to our module component, the app module component, and add this import right here. Let's try and do it. Jumping into our code, opening the app module, going down to imports, doing a comma right here and just pasting this guy in. Let's see if that is available. It seems it is, so now I have a buttons module available for my application. Placed in the root because we only have one module right now, since we're making a very simple application, that should be all we had to do. So now we have the button module in here. By the way, notice there's going to be a module for each area you want to work with, like an alert module, there's going to be a accordion module. Now that's because we want to keep Angular as modular as possible, so just so you guys know. What else do we need to kind of use and create a button looking something like this? We can actually add a class to our buttons, and in our case it's going to be a class with the um, with a class name of button and button primary to make it a beautiful blue button right there. So let's just try and copy this and see if we can put that inside one of our, let's just use the list right here, let's just use the back button and add this class to that back button, because now it should actually change from basic button into something that's a bit more shiny, a blue color. There we go, look at this, now it's a real button. Now there's something about the layout, we can live with that for now. So that was how easy it actually was to kind of change that button. And notice there's also something happening right here, the colors are blue now. Maybe also if we go and update, you'll see these guys has turned into something that a bit more, uh, a bit different input feels because we have now added a different styling, a bootstrap styling to our entire application. Let's just try and go back. What if we wanted to add this to buttons here as well, add some kind of styling. Um, maybe I can find some colors for the buttons. There's some green colors here, how do you do that? It seems there's primary for the buttons. There's also success, let's try and just add that to one of our classes if we want to kind of change the look and feel of that button. So instead of the, the delete, instead of being uh, this way, let's try and add a new styling to that one, the delete button, there it is. Adding a new class for success, now it turned to a green button. Probably not the right color, so let's put in maybe warning instead of success. That's another another type, warning, save that. There we go, now it's yellow, maybe that would be the color, maybe that would be the color for update. Let's put that on the update up here, and we go. Now I need to find the color for, for not, not warning, it needs to be something that says, if you press this you're going to delete something, and how do we actually figure that out? Let's go to getbootstrap.com, actually see if we can figure that out on how we can actually theme a specific button. Let's just go to component, 
go to buttons and have a look here. It's called danger, right? So I'll put in the style of danger to kind of make my button red. Oh yeah, danger. There we go, let's try and jump back. And again, it's not pretty in any way, but notice I just changed into actually using Bootstrap now instead of using the good old plain CSS. Sweet, we have Bootstrap running. That's all we had to do. Now we can start looking at all the different look and feel of Bootstrap. And I'll just do a few more things and then we'll end these lessons. See you next time, have fun.